coming you know, for many people. Um, I know that's kind of a broad word. Because um, the thing is, when you live as a Christian, what are you? You're living from glory to glory. So there's always a new thing coming. There's always something new to discover in the Lord. There's always a new place to grow into. Um, the river is flowing, okay? So there's always somewhere to be and always a new place to be. But unfortunately, we don't always all experience that. So what I want to encourage you, though, is there's a lot of new things coming. It's coming rapidly, uh, but there's some tweaks we got to make. And today is there's four tweaks that we need to make, all of us. Because whether the new that's new to you is new to, is is the new thing that's different to somebody else, but it's new, and it's and God's doing this because He's building this amazing bride. Okay, so the adjustments you need to make before this thing really kicks in. So you, God wants this is the beauty of it. The Spirit wants us to know what to do, so we can get the new. What to do so you can get the new? Maybe I should have put that as the title. But anyways, um, the first thing is we gotta we gotta really be decisive. Um, you know, a double-minded man is un unstable in all his ways. That's what Peter says, okay? Um, and, you know, you can't be asking God for something and then, you know, not expect to hear it or, 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 or when you hear it, don't act on it. Uh, you know, that's double-mindedness. It's going back and forth, back and forth. I trust God. Oh, but, you know, you, you, I'm praying for somebody to be healed, but I really doubt that they're going to get healed. You know what I'm saying? A double-minded person is unstable in other ways. And they can't, and I think he even says in there, and you can't expect God to answer anything. Thanks. Pretty sure you may want to check that. But uh, that's that's Second Peter. Uh, but that's not the point of, of, of this of this brew. So I'm, I'm actually just going to move on. So if there's a correction, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. But anyway, so we've got to be decisive because there's decisions that we need to make. And you've got to make them in light of the Holy Spirit. And here's the key. When he tells you what to do, you gotta listen and obey. I'll give you an example. A number of years back, I had a business relationship with somebody, and, and I was really looking at it because it looked like a lucrative business relationship, and and, and I was very excited because it looked like for our business it was going to be great income stream. And he brings into my uh, life this this um, new age movie, and he has me watch it, and it's got principles of the kingdom. And I'm going to tell you something. You want to know the difference between new age and the kingdom? Is the new age recognizes that this book is full of true principles and there's things that work but they leave out Jesus and they leave out the truth of the clarity of the truth of him is the only way and God the Father they create their own gods but long and short what happened was the Lord gave me a picture of a meat cleaver with a relationship on a chopping block and I saw him cut it he told me you better cut that thing off right now and it cost us business it cost us real money but at the time, I was not spiritually in tune and discerned to a lot of the things I am now. I was still growing up. But I, I had to be decisive to make that decision. I called him in my office and he was in shock. He said, God told you, you know, he was just, but the point was, now that I know what I know now, our dad was good. Whew, was he good? Would have opened my whole self up to a lot of witchcraft, a lot of stuff that just you don't need. Okay, because then you got to spend time getting it out. So he just cut it off. Well, and I'm not saying that's for you. What I'm, I'm giving it as an example, sometimes you got to be just decisive. And it may not make sense or it may look like it's going to cost you something that you don't want to pay the price for. But it's okay. Ask Holy Spirit. He knows what to lean out, knows what to do. And then listen to him, obey him, and trust him. Okay, but you got to be decisive. Whatever the decision is, be decisive. Second thing we got to do, the number two tweak is you got to let it go. Let it go. I'm not going to say if my wife watches this, she'll be like, I can't believe you just did that. All right, let it go. Got to let it go. There's things to let go of. I don't know what it is. But, you know, my sense was as I was preparing for this was, uh, you know, sometimes outcomes that you desire, let it go. Let God unfold it. He's the author. He's the finisher. Let him unfold it. Because the, if you're, because the problem is you hold on to an outcome, it doesn't happen, and then you start questioning because you think it's got to look like this. I don't know what this all looks like. I don't want to have phones. So I know he wins. I know we're his. And I know we're going to be glorious and spotless. 
and uh, it's going to be awesome, right? So I, I know I trust them. So outcomes that you desire, expectations of how things should be, what it should look like, what revival should be, and how things should be. Let all that go. Jesus never did the same miracle. The, the never did a miracle the same way. All right. I forget how many miracles. I think 28. But, you know, um, he never did them the same. Why? Because we got, we, he knows us. We love form. We like to formulate. We like to come up with the way things should be done. Like four tweaks you need to make. <laughs> You get my point. The problem is, 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 is he just doesn't do things the same. Okay, so um, how things should be is up to him. He determines it. Let it go. Your dreams, maybe some relationships or traditions or the way things that, you know, whatever it is, he'll tell you what it is, but you got to let it go. If you want the new, Moses, uh, Joshua, Moses, my servant, is dead. You now need to lead them in the promised land. What God did under Moses was going to be different under Joshua. Moses is dead. Let it go. And that was hard for those people because this was Moses. Now it's Joshua. We got to be the same kind of people. Number three, let it be added. What do you mean? Of course, David, I would want God to add stuff to me. Uh-uh. Because when stuff's added, there's new responsibility, new expectations, and you got to learn how to operate and what's added you know it's like sometimes you get a new thing and you know it's it's like getting a new high performance piece of equipment you gotta learn how to use that thing there's expectations to it too there's expectations of growth there's expectations of maturity there's expectations from god on righteousness and holiness and purity and those are not bad words those are great words those are fantastic words that we want to embrace but you need to have things added because the new territory is going to require that you operate different. That's that Joshua Moses picture is a perfect picture of that. The way things are about to be done were very different than the way they were done. So you need things added and they need to be acquired. It could be resources, training, healing of a soul wound or whatever, understanding, wisdom, um, could maybe buy land, equipment, people. Let people be added to your life. And if you stick to your own little circle all the time and your own little group of friends all the time, because that's where you're comfortable, you might be missing the one person you need that brings the new thing into your life. You know what I'm saying? So we got to have an attitude of let it be out of the Lord and ask Holy Spirit, always take everything and go back to Holy Spirit and let him figure this out for you. Fourth, this doesn't need to be vast. These tweaks don't have to be huge. Like you don't have to quit your job and move out to California or you know, go to Mozambique or whatever. You don't have to do that. That's not necessarily what I'm saying. It's not might not be a wide swath. Um, it could be just minor tweaks, okay? But they keep you on course. And as you're climbing the mountain, you want to stay on course. Okay? And so sometimes you gotta make a lot of tweaks. Or some small tweaks got a little fly right around here. Um, and here's what I feel the Lord's saying. He's like, let me lead you. And let me show you, the Holy Spirit will show you, um, his goal is to give you righteousness and to change you and to grow you and make you look more like Jesus. So these changes are huge. Be decisive, let it go, let it be out of, and, and uh, small adjustments. You know, a plane is off course most of the time, and all the pilot does is make small adjustments to keep it back. Just a few degrees here or there, and it gets to its destination on time. And you two are like that. So today's verse out of an awesome book, Ecclesiastes, because everything is meaningless, right? <laughs> but we all know this verse, because there's a great song about this, but it's Ecclesiastes 3.1, and it says, to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. Past is the past, we're going forward in the future, a new thing is coming your way, all right? So as always, remember, you are light, salt, truth, and love. And so you keep climbing, you stay in your lane, and you stay in love, and we'll see you for the next morning brew, and would you please share this with your friends, all right? And keep coming back. We'll see you for tomorrow's brew. Have a great day. You've just watched the Morning Brew Daily Devotion with David Cross. For a more in-depth study on this and other transformation discipleship topics, 
with a prophetic perspective, visit our website at www.mountainguideministries.com.